Hello everyone. Um, on behalf of the Cognizant Workday Practice, we want to welcome you to our webinar and thank you for spending time with us today. We know everyone's really busy, especially with the holidays coming up, trying to pack four weeks of work, work, four weeks of work into um, the time we have. So today we're going to take a look at Workday PCON and the various accessibility options available to increase employee engagement. Hannah will also share a live demo of the PECON environment and walk through a number of questions following the demo. With that said, my name is Kelly Brunsman. I am the Workday Alliances Director here at Cognizant, and I'd like to introduce Hannah Liss. She's a strategy advisor in our practice. Hannah has a number of years of experience, over 10 in surveys. She is an industrial organizational psychologist, and she has a background in engagement with lots of experience working with very large companies in people services teams. She leads our survey efforts for our company here at Cogniz the Cognizant Workday Practice, and she partners with leaders on reporting, accessing data, and improving their teammate experience. She is also a PECON prog product lead for Cognizant. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the presentation over to Hannah now. And if you guys could complete the poll, we would really appreciate that. Thanks for joining and thanks Kelly for the introduction. So today I'll be providing a webinar on Workday PECON Employee Voice, PECON for short, and we're going to talk about how you can configure this tool to encourage survey participation specifically, starting with access. So today I'll provide an introduction to PECON, an overview of the general survey participants experience, and then I'll get into the different PECON survey access methods. I'll review a dashboard access method that's pretty cool as well, followed by a demo. And I'll do my best to have time for questions at the end of this call. I typically aim for about 15 minutes worth of questions. So please go ahead and post those in the chat or in the Q&A function um, as they come to you throughout this call and we'll do our best to visit them later. So some of you may be familiar with what PECON is and how it works, but just to be sure we're all on the same page, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview. So I'll start with defining engagement. So because you, before you choose your engagement tool or survey on engagement, it's really important to understand what this concept means exactly. So PECON defines engagement as the outcome of the relationship between an organization and its employees. Engagement reflects how connected employees feel to their work, their colleagues, and the wider business. Engaged employees are associated with a ton of really positive results. They feel more comfortable at work, they tend to perform better, and they show higher commitment to their organization than less engaged employees. So it's really important to have a measurement of this and that that measurement is, act, is um, valid and it's continually updating. And PECON itself is considered an engagement tool, more so than a, a survey tool. It's not well suited for ad hoc surveys, for example. It's much more focused on engagement and continuous feedback. And with that being said, PECON is really well set up for continuous surveying without a heavy admin burden or survey fatigue for your users. But these outcomes are going to be most possible when organizations align their PECON practices and their configuration to PECON's best practice standards. The most important best practice associated with PECON is this frequent surveying. So the goal according to PECON should be weekly or bi-weekly surveys. If you do this, it just helps ensure that your data is accurate, it's dynamic, and it truly is telling a story and reflecting what's happening in your organization. Traditional engagement surveying that happens you know, every six months, maybe annually, maybe even less so, this is more of a pulse. So more like one moment in time with data that becomes irrelevant, honestly, or invalid really quickly. So this practice counteracts that. <clears throat> now I do know that weekly or bi-weekly surveying, it can sound pretty scary to organizations and this isn't required. It's something that we just recommend you build up to over time. Most of my customers start out with quarterly surveying and kind of then take a take a breath after those quarterly surveying have been going on for maybe a year or so, and then consider more frequent surveying. <clears throat> and then the second really important best practice associated with PECON is using the PECON delivered survey questions as much as possible. PECON has a validated question bank that can be benchmarked against other industries, making them really useful, adding a, another layer of context to your scores. 
a lot of the time a manager tends to look at their dashboard and see high scores and think good and low scores and think bad. This isn't necessarily true. Like I use the example of total rewards a lot. If we're asking and surveying about total rewards, about salary and comp, these questions are always going to be scored lower. And then conversely, questions on leadership and management, they tend to be higher just by the nature of the question. With benchmarking added to these questions, we have, like I said, this additional layer of context to say, okay, this question on total rewards is lower than all of our other questions, but it's actually a point higher than the overall industry. So maybe it's actually something we should be celebrating here. So now that we have a baseline of what exactly engagement is and what PECON is, I'm going to now refer to surveys in general. So organizations are ideally really thoughtfully configuring their surveys and they're really thinking about how they're presenting their survey links and their dashboards to employees. Often they have really genuine intentions to collect data to improve the employee experience and they really have high hopes when they implement a new tool. However, no matter how beautiful this survey and the dashboards that you've created are, these don't matter if you're not looking at your surveys as a cyclical process and uh, really holistically. So on this slide, I put together a visual of the ideal survey cycle. So in an ideal world, the survey cycle would start with pre-survey communications, followed by the request to participate with a survey link. Employees would then follow that link, access the survey tool, they would provide their data and complete the survey. And then managers and sometimes employees would access dashboards with relevant findings from the survey. Teams would then take action on these findings and finally everybody would see these actions being taken and would experience an improved employee experience. And then a continuous cycle of improvement would be established with pre-communications then starting again with employees like fully on board with this whole cycle and the goals associated with it. However, this isn't how surveys go all the time. You'll notice in this visual here and what I just described that employees in their user experience, they have to cross several hurdles before actually providing their data and in every survey tool, there is dropout during this experience when an employee decides that it's too much work to continue and they no longer are invested in this process, they have other work to get back to. Organizations know this, of course, but often they tend to get fixated on one or two steps in this six step cycle here. So during configuration and then afterwards, organizations tend to focus really heavily on completing the survey and on their dashboards. So organizations often become kind of hyper fixated on a really short survey that doesn't take much time and is easy and beautiful dashboards that managers know how to use and that they like. These are of course important areas to consider, but if the other four steps are overlooked, the user might not even get to this point. They might not get to experience this thing that you've configured so well. So again, we want to think about this holistically. So again, I'm going to talk about this ideal world and an ideal survey experience pre-survey communications would go out with information on the survey, like date, estimated time required and expectations. To be successful here, the goal of the survey and the expectations of the survey takers should be shared and they should resonate with employees. So employees are aware of what's coming and they're on board. Next, if all goes well, employees would receive their link and their communication requesting their participation. To be successful here, the employee receives this communication via a medium that they check often. All, a lot of the time, that's email. Next, if they understand the purpose of the survey and what's expected for them and they receive their link, they would log into the survey tool. To be successful here, the login would be easy. With PECON, users don't need to log in to take a survey, so the easiest situation is already configured by default. <clears throat> And then next, if everything has gone successfully, the employee would finally actually provide their data. This is where the questions you've selected come into play. And yes, it is important that the survey isn't perceived as too long, but you'll notice that this is the fourth step or the fourth hurdle. If these three earlier steps are overlooked, the employee might not even make it far enough to decide if the survey itself is too long or too demanding. So today I'm going to focus on one of these hurdles, the initial request for participation. Econ offers 
various methods to send the initial survey request and link. Uh, and this is in an effort to reduce the dropout number. And it really does have the bases covered. So when we think about sending a survey link, we typically think of email. This isn't the most exciting part of surveys, but it is one of the most important parts. And there are options to support this initial email communication or potentially replace emails entirely, just depending on your population. But in general, employees, they're most likely to engage with links coming from a trusted source and through a communication medium that they already check often. So to make our employees' lives easier and make participation look easiest, we want to provide survey links via their most commonly used mediums. Often this is email and something else like instant messaging, um, maybe Teams or Slack. We want to align how the survey link is communicated with the organization's overall communication strategy. So we want the language in this communication to be similar to other communications going out from your organization. The timing should be expected and we don't want them to suspect that this email is phishing or spam. So we wanna provide notice, let employees know that they will be receiving this link and an invitation to take this survey. We don't want to tell employees about this survey and then have them searching for a link that potentially went to spam or is buried under seven other emails from HR with competing priorities with emails that were all sent within five minutes of each other. We don't want to send links through one medium that a group or groups of employees don't use. Maybe our customer service team relies on Slack more than email. We would want to send them their link via Slack then. So what might seem like a simple decision really does deserve some time and some thought and consideration. And Pecan offers four main avenues to send survey links through. So we have email, this traditional route with an email coming from app at pecan.com to employees with a personal link that'll take them to their survey. Then we have the option to set up a Teams integration. So a message would push to Teams and employees can actually take the survey within Teams, which is very cool. With Slack, a message would push to Slack and employees would follow their link to Pecan and last SMS. So a text would push to employees with a link that they could then follow to Pecan. So email, Slack, and SMS all follow the same process. A communication is sent with a link to Pecan. Employees follow that link and take their survey within Pecan, but Teams, like I said, is a bit different. If you decide that your population uses Teams often and it would make their lives easier to provide their survey here, employees would receive a Teams notification letting them know their survey is live and employees can actually complete the survey within Teams. So an entire step is removed here, which is huge. And last for this section, I just wanna share one other configuration option. This is not related to survey access, but I think it's a really great way to introduce Pecan as a complementary tool to Workday. If you have people experience in scope or you're using people experience already, you'll be familiar with PEX cards. These are little icons that appear on an employee's Workday homepage and lead to other areas. And there is a Pecan PEX card available for managers. So I wanna share this because a lot of customers when moving to Workday or when maintaining Workday, they really want Workday to be a one-stop shop, a place where all things HR live. Pecan is a separate tool from Workday, and that is for several reasons, one being that employees are more likely to trust an engagement tool to host their data safely that is separate from where their employee data lives. But if your organization really is committed to this one-stop shop idea, configuring the Pecan PEX card can help to highlight this connection between Workday and Pecan. Really remind everyone and managers specifically that they are separate but related tools that communicate very nicely. So managers would see the card on their homepage and be able to click on it to visit their Pecan manager dashboards or um, yeah, their dashboards whenever you schedule this. I think it um, defaults to once a month, this would be scheduled to show up on your homepage, but in an ideal world that would align with your survey schedule. So now that I've covered what to consider and different options for accessing Pecan, I'm going to actually show you the tool starting with a survey.
So just note that your pecan would look a little different from this, particularly with branding. I just have a fake logo in here right now. But this page is an example of what it would look like if the employee had received their survey invitation, clicked on their personalized link, and now they're able to start their survey. So as an employee visits their survey welcome page, they're given details on the survey, how many questions they'll be asked, estimated time required, and a reminder of confidentiality, not anonymity. I always like to point that out because we do want to be honest with our employees. And because Workday is connected to PECON, it makes it useful because you can tie employees back to their demographics and break them out by segment. So their identity is kept confidential, but it's not anonymous. Additionally, there's going to be a warning about disclosing personal details that might actually identify them. So basically letting employees know, um, don't use your name in this. We'd start our survey. And as an employee starts the survey, they'll see, first of all, a progress bar to the right. Most questions are also asked on this Likert scale of 0 to 10, with 0 indicating that they don't agree at all with the statement and 10 indicating that they absolutely agree. There are also illustrations on each page. These are meant to make, yes, the survey is visually appealing, but they're also meant to prevent survey fatigue. They sort of spark a different part of the brain and give the participants some new stimulation. These can be enabled or disabled during configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question. And whenever you select an answer, you get an option to explain why you answered the way you did. This helps just ensure that the employee truly can provide the exact feedback that they want to, but it's not required. I can just continue to the next question if I don't feel like that's necessary. Now, if I don't understand the question or if I simply just don't feel comfortable answering, I always have the ability to skip the question here. I'll be asked why I'm skipping. I'll go ahead and answer that. I'll say I don't have an opinion. And then I'll just be presented with the next question. You can also advance to the end of the survey if you ever want to. I'm going to do that now because I've shown you kind of the main aspects and hopefully you have a good idea of the look and feel here. So I'm going to click skip to the end and preview the survey thank you page because I am in preview right now. So when you skip to the end or complete a survey, you'll be taken to this employee summary page, which provides information on historical and current trends for the employee personally. So details on what they're happy with, what they're least happy with. This space encourages the employee to take more accountability in their personal engagement, kind of remind them to speak to their manager if it seems helpful, and help establish some accountability. So some data ownership and remind the employee that they have a part in this too, basically, and keep them involved. This act of just completing the survey when asked to could be the only way a typical individual contributor would interact with PECON, but there's also an option to enable the employee dashboard if you feel like your employees are ready for that and have the interest in this. So I'm gonna hop over to this other tab here, and this is the personal dashboard in PECON. You'll see this personal dashboard tab is highlighted here. If um, your personal dashboards aren't configured, this just wouldn't show up. If the dashboard is enabled, though, an employee could visit this page to take a little deep dive into their scores and potentially their team and organizational scores. Just note that right now in this example dashboard, I have every potential viewing option enabled. But when we get into this for your organization, you would be able to show less than this if you wanted to. But here, right off the bat, you'll see an overview of your personal engagement data. Here I can see that my individual engagement score is at a 6.5. You can see engagement, diversity and inclusion and transformation and change. These are have stuck around the same scores. But health and well-being, for example, this arrow down indicates that my score has gone down recently here. So it's trending downward. Then down below, I can see some stats associated with my survey taking. I can see how many comments I've provided, how many surveys I've participated in, and how many questions I've answered. And then if enabled, employees can also see some comparisons to their team and their company if I head over to your survey results. I can go here, my team in this fake company that I'm showing you, my team's actually too small. We didn't have enough people participate to show this. so. 
that's a confidentiality measure there. But if my team was large, I could see a bar here that would have my team score there. But right now I can just see how I'm comparing to my organization. Again, we see this arrow here. You can see the organizational score has gone up recently. We can see a little visual of how these scores have potentially changed over the past survey rounds. And then down here, we can see similar breakouts for our different drivers of engagement. And then last, if I want to, and if I've provided enough, I can go to the comment section here to see all of the comments that I've provided in the past, just as a reference. And now I'm gonna shift focus onto the most commonly used dashboard, and that's gonna be the manager dashboard. So I'm gonna head to what we call the insights tab. And here I have a staged manager dashboard. So depending on your PECON configuration choices and your organization size, this might appear a bit differently than what organizations would end up with. Again, I have most options configured so I can view a lot and so I can show a lot of data today. But if you wanted to start out slow with your managers, you feel like this might be overwhelming if you've maybe never had a dashboard available to managers, you can always show less than this. But depending on your PECON configuration and your organization size, this might appear differently than what an or another organization would end up with. But in general, this is what the manager dashboard will look like. So up here, I always like to point out we have this thing called the context switcher. If I click here, you can see right now I am a very powerful manager at my company. I can view the entire organization here. But if I wanted to, I could differentiate between my team, that's going to include direct and indirect reports, or my team only direct reports. And if I were to click here, you can see that the whole dashboard will update to reflect just that group. If you are in like HR or you're a leader that has layers beneath you of leadership, you could also search for people here. So you could search for managers like with that fall within your leadership and view their teams as well. But for today, I'm gonna stick with our organization because that'll populate the dashboard most. I also like to point out the similarities to Workday here. So you'll notice we have a notifications icon here. This will populate when you either have a, an action item that you've committed to, or if there's a survey coming up or closing soon. There's also this help menu here. It'll take you to some resources associated with PECON, maybe if you're new or need a refresher. And again, exactly like Workday, you have an area with your initials in it where you can head to your profile or log out if you want to. And then when we get into our actual data, right away, you'll notice there's a lot to look at here. We have different question sets to look at. We can head straight to comments. If we look at this panel on the left, we can work on an action plan or up top, we could head to the analysis tab. That's where we could look at heat maps and some more visually driven insights. Today, I'm going to focus mainly on this page here, our insights tab, essentially our homepage for managers in PECON. So you can see here that the manager dashboard defaults to engagement scores. It's highlighted in blue over here, but you can also select diversity and inclusion, health and well-being, any other areas your team chooses to measure. All of these different pages, if I click on them, we'll have this same setup with the large number here being the average score either on this scale of zero to 10 or on an NPS scale, if that's what your organization's preference. I'm gonna stick with engagement today though and head into these insights a little bit. So if you hover over the question mark next to engagement score up here, I can click on it to see additional detail on how this 7.4 score was calculated. So I can see the questions included, which you can see are all hyperlinked. So I could click on any of these to take a deep dive into the actual scores for those questions and kind of the theory behind those questions. Then if I click on outcomes over here, you can see the outcomes will populate to view the individual scores for each item included in the average calculation of this engagement score here. So we have belief, loyalty, and satisfaction. You can see these are all around the same, but sometimes we might have one score that's a lot higher than the other or a lot lower than another score. That would indicate to us pretty clearly where we should focus on. 
You can also see that we're comparing our team score of the 7.4 to the true benchmark of 7.9, which is higher than my team's score. This indicates that engagement is maybe in need of some attention because we are scoring lower than the benchmark than companies that are similar to us. I can always click in here. And when I select true benchmark, I'm provided with some details explaining what true benchmark is. This is a way of adjusting your industry benchmark to be more accurate based on the makeup of your population. So for example, new hires, they tend to show and they tend to often have higher scores or inflated scores compared to uh, different employees with higher tenure. So when they're answering their engagement engagement surveys, they tend to have higher scores. If your population had a bunch of new hires, then PECON would correct for this and bring those scores slightly down to be more comparable to the entire industry. So it would show you an accurate comparison that accounts for scores that have shown to differ from the average insights and from true insights. This is a really helpful way, again, to contextualize your data. So you're not only just looking at high averages versus low averages, you're looking at your scores versus the industry, and you'll be able to make more informed inferences and make your next steps um, decide on those a bit more with more information. Then to the right, you can see how your team score has changed over time. If I expand this, I'll see how my team score has changed over time in a visual, as well as how the benchmark has changed. So you can see my score in the solid line and the benchmark in the dotted line here. So you can see that I've been making some progress to minimize the gap over time. The outcomes here, the things that make up this general score, I can also toggle these to populate how these scores have changed over time. And then you can always update your time frame if you want to look at a specific moment in time. Now, if I look under participation, I can turn on this toggle here. If I click on like latest rounds, we're also presented with a visual. I can again, toggle things like the benchmark and the average participation here to view exactly what we're averaging over this long period of time. And these bars, are we're gonna have one bar per survey. I'm gonna X out. And again, if we click on like aggregated participation, we'll have a similar breakout as well as with score accuracy. So score accuracy now, this will just explain that PECON, most of the time, if you have high participation or average participation, the score accuracy is going to be high. Basically means that if all employees had answered, the score would change very little most of the time. Then below our engagement average, I always like to point out, you'll see this ENPS distribution. This is employee net promoter score. And this scale ranges from negative 100 to 100, with a negative score representing the percent of participants who have answered as detractors or people who are not promoting the company, positive scores representing the percent of participants who have answered as promoters, people who are promoting the company in their survey answers, as well as passives, people who are scoring in the middle area. We can also view the score here in NPS if we want to. We can always just click up here. And we can see I'm at a 21. That's a relatively neutral area because it's close to that zero. But I feel like average is a bit more intuitive, so I'm going to stay there today and head farther down. So just below the engagement overview, you'll see details on the drivers. So these are significant areas scoring. These are areas that are scoring significantly. So areas of additional focus. You'll see a list of suggested priorities up top. These are areas or areas of opportunity to improve and then areas that your team is doing great on. These are gonna be our strengths down here. These are selected based off of their variance from the true benchmark. So they're areas that are scoring either significantly high or significantly low. And then next to them, you can see the average scores for all of these drivers. You can see their variance from the true benchmark, where, we, where they fall within this benchmark. And to the right, you'll see an impact visual. 
So I can hover over it for an explanation. It's probably a little bit too small for everybody to view here, but if you can, I'll keep it there. These two circles will overlap more or less depending on how much this particular score has statistically shown to impact engagement. So when the two circles overlap more, the score impacts engagement more. So we can see here organizational fit these two circles are overlapping a lot. That means that if I'm a manager, I come in here and I decide to take action and successfully improve and increase my organizational fit score, this 8.3 would not only go up, but this 7.4 total engagement score would also increase. With things like peer relationship, we can see it doesn't have a huge impact on engagement. So I still could take action here to improve this score, but it's gonna affect overall engagement less. So when you're taking action, I always recommend that you focus on these areas that have a high impact. You'll get more for your efforts there. I could click into any of these drivers and it would show me a breakout of the overview page of that particular driver. So how my team is scoring on organizational fit, for example, it would show this in a similar format to this page that we're on now. So I could click here. And see a breakout. You'll notice it's very similar to the page we were just on, except it's all about organizational fit here. So I can see all of the same type of metrics, just different breakouts. I also, you can see I've already prioritized this. So it would have been populated in my action plan within PECON already. And I can look at resources to improve this driver if I want to. I can also add actions associated with this item. So PECON will provide resources and actions that you have the option to commit to, to improve this score like today or tomorrow. Then we'll have comments associated with this particular driver, as well as segment breakouts. So similar to the significance we were talking about, groups of employees that are scoring significantly higher or significantly lower than the average. I'm going to head back to our insights tab now and continue down here. And you'll notice on our homepage, our insights tab here, we have the same option to add option, add actions, to see our action plan, or to create an action if we want to. You can see that I have created actions for some of these. I can also deprioritize them if I'm no longer trying to focus on those areas. So as a manager, I could set this driver as a priority, something I want to focus on that I would then add an action plan to, to address. If I feel like it's not accurate though, like down here maybe, if I am if I don't agree that growth or career path should be a priority to me, I could deprioritize it and something else would populate there. We won't be going over action planning specifically today, but you can see it is over here. And it's a really useful function. I think being able to commit to actions and being able to read resources and interact with those resources within PECON is very helpful because it, it eliminates the need for manual workarounds that a lot of organizations are currently using. And as I scroll down, I can look then at any significant segments. So groups of employees that are scoring significantly higher or lower than our average. These have similar information. They have the average scores for engagement, difference from the benchmark. And then on the right, we can see two small visuals here. So these indicate attrition risk and their ENPS distribution. So this first one, ATT period risk, that means attrition risk. Again, if we hover over it, you'll notice in PECON, if you hover over things, it'll tell you what they mean. So this one next to Berlin, though, we see this visual is barely populated in green, meaning that this group is largely not at risk to term. Conversely, though, if we go down here, like for our senior managers, the attrition visual is almost all red, meaning that this group is pretty at risk. They're almost entirely red. This indicates that they're at high risk to terminate. PECON offers a whole heat map with attrition risk breakouts, but that's not our focus for today. That's going to be found in the analysis tab, though. And then the other visual is this distribution here, the ENPS groups. So red indicates the portion of detractors, gray is passives, and green is promoters. And you will see um, it's pretty intuitive with our significantly high groups. We see a lot of green in this distribution, a lot of people promoting the company in these segments. And down below, we see a lot of red, so a lot of detractors in these groups, people who need a little bit of help with their engagement. 
And then farther down, if you choose to survey on company values, you'll see these results here. You can see my company has the values of trust, experience, and insight. We're all scoring around the 7.3 to 7.5 space there. You can again see the NPS breakouts here. And then by highlighted topics, PECON over time will develop these highlighted topics. So themes that your employees share in their responses. You can see here that when employees are asked about the driver strategic objectives, for example, they're asked to, they respond about strategic objectives when they're asked about meaningful work. So you'll see the driver down below that they were asked about, the average score for that driver, the number of comments that have been provided for that, and a general theme that PECON is noticing among employees. This will develop over time. It takes quite a bit of data to start churning these out, but it can be really helpful after you've maybe done a couple of surveys and these start to develop. And at the very bottom, if there are any, we'll see highlighted comments that were selected to represent this driver. And as I'm sure you've noticed by now, there is a link at the bottom to view all comments if you want to. These are the highlighted comments, and that means that they either have action words in them, so like could, would, should, or they meet a specific length requirement for PECON to indicate, okay, this person clearly has something to say that should be prioritized. If I want to, I can in PECON um, respond to these comments in a conversation. So I can actually type out a response here if I want to. And if I have that uh, ability configured for my group, I can also acknowledge comments. So some of our IT systems are just ancient. It takes hours to enter a few expenses and all the time I want to scream, it's such a waste. Well, it turns out that my company is implementing some really cool new tools that are going to eliminate that time wasted. So I'm going to acknowledge this and I could choose working on it if I wanted to, and if I maybe didn't want to actually have a conversation here. And then if I wanted to view all of our comments at one time, I could click here. You can see now we're in the comment section of our insights tab. And I'll be taken to a page where I can view every single comment that the people within my leadership, right now I'm viewing the whole org though, all of the comments that they've provided. I really like the comments breakout in PECON because you can filter here. So I really like filtering by NPS category. Depending on the type of information I'm looking for, maybe the type of feedback I'm interested in on any given day, I can view my detractors and all the comments they've provided, my passives or my promoters. So I could maybe look at my passives. And I can see here, I have 166 comments provided from employees who are considered passive. I can also filter by interactions. So comments that I've already replied to, or comments that I haven't replied to. The same is true for acknowledgements. So comments I have acknowledged or haven't. I can also filter by time period. So whatever um, survey round is live that I'm interested in. And then last here, you can actually search for keywords. So maybe it's like benefits time of year and you want to search comments related to open enrollment. You could search for any keywords related to that here and find comments with those words in them. And then if I'm like in HR maybe, or if I'm maybe a higher up leader who has access to sensitive comments, this tab would populate here. For most managers, they probably wouldn't have access to this, but PECON would have sensitive comments over here that you could monitor, and these would have trigger words in them. So words that are associated with like violence or malpractice at work, you could view these to keep tabs on them and see if you need action taking or you need to loop in other parties during the survey. And then after all of this, I would probably head to my improve tab where I could view the whole bank of resources that PECON provides. I could view things like articles, videos, uh, as well as action planning here and some micro courses. These you can see most of them take about 10 minutes and you can learn about one of the drivers included in PECON. So if I wanted to take action on like meaningful work like we were talking about earlier, I could filter by that in this area in the improved tab and I could view resources just associated with that. You can see up here under all resources. I can also look at question theme specific resources like if I wanted to look at maybe health and well-being resources I could do that and view different articles as well as actions associated with those items. 
Okay. And that is all I have prepared for you in this demo today. I think we're at good time now. I'm going to head back into our deck and open us up for questions. Hi, Hannah. We, questions have we have some great questions today. Um, and staying with the theme of access, um, let me find the one I wanted here. Denise asked the question, can you push out a survey link via Workday or our email Slack teams and SMS the only options? So you cannot actually put out a notification in Workday right now. Workday has a surveys tool already, so that would probably confuse things a bit. But with Pecon, you can use the PEX card if you want to and kind of remind managers to go from there to view their dashboards. Um. So next question from Amanda, 80% of our population are frontline workers. What recommendations do you have on how to communicate the survey to the workers? And how would you recommend, in addition, how would you recommend getting access to the survey if they do not have access to email messaging system? I think that's a pretty common problem um, among our, our customers. Yeah, great question. Something I didn't go over today is actually kiosks as well. If you have kiosks for these workers, you can integrate Pecan with those and have them sign into a kiosk and take their survey there. You can also push via SMS. So I would definitely want to talk more about kind of the nature of these employees work and what tools they are interacting with more. Do they use email at all or are they on their phones more? Or are they on kiosks? Hopefully one of those, and we could talk about which one would kind of be the easiest for them and approach it that way. Um, from Delaney, our benchmark data is, is benchmark data collected from other customers who have implemented Pecan, or is there an industry research or is industry research data embedded within the algorithm? Great question. So the true benchmark is going to be PECON users. So uh, companies that are actively using PECON and providing their data, it's also updated quarterly. And then um, for Marie, does PECON summarize trends, themes, or sentiment of open-ended questions? Yes, PECON does actually have trending data there. If I actually hop back into the tenant here, we can head to our analysis tab, actually, which I didn't show you today. And eventually all of these will start contributing to the trending data as well as in our, and they'll be integrated with our Likert sale questions and our averages. It's like the employee experience cycle here. That's a reporting functionality in Pecan. And over time, this will start to develop trends based on the open comment responses and the, the Likert style responses that employees provide. So we can break this out by onboarding employees, initial development, and then ongoing development and retention, as well as separation after employees um, were contributing to their PECON surveys and then they left. So we could go here and view different reports uh, based on like the point in the likes life cycle you're at as an employee. You can see themes on how they're feeling and what's trending with those employees, kind of areas that go well for them at these points in their life cycle and areas that could probably use some work for like mid, uh, mid tenured employees, as well as on the insights tab here. We went over this briefly, but if we head down to highlighted topics here, I was already there. This will integrate both. So you can see here these employees, they're scoring an average score of 10 on the engagement driver of meaningful work. And here's some comments that are related to those there. And then I think from Leah's kind of stay on the same topic, are there resources and content on how to take action and improve scores, which is really relevant? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually gonna hop right back into there. Yeah, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get you before you get off there. <laughs> yeah. So actually I'm gonna start here. So I can show you kind of exactly how I would go about it if I were a manager trying to take action. So I'm going to start from the top. I'm on my insights tab, kind of my homepage. I can see these priority areas that I have. And let's say I want to improve career path here. We're scoring a 5.1 here in the bottom 5% of our industry. We're 2.1 below that true benchmark. And you can see that we have a high impact on engagement here. So this would be a great place to focus on. So I'm going to click here. I can get further acquainted with this score. I can see kind of how everybody's breaking out, how it's changed over time. And then over here, I can click on see resources. 
And that would take me to different articles and kind of passing information. So micro courses, articles, videos, I could see all and be taken to the impact tab or the improve tab. Also, I could plan actions to improve this score. So PECON not only has those passive actions, so the videos, articles, as well as micro courses, they have actual actions that you can commit to. So I could click on see suggested actions here. And I could see that PECON has suggested that I discuss ideal career paths with each team member, provide clear detailed job descriptions, and create cross-functional growth plans. I can also create my own action if I want to. But if one of these really resonated me, let's say resonated with me, let's say I wanted to discuss ideal career paths with, te with each team member. I could click on it. And the interactive page pops up here. So I can edit. First of all, the title here. So if I wanted to change anything there, I could. I could also add or edit the description. I could set a deadline for myself if I wanted to. Let's say I wanna get this done by like the new year. And then I could decide if I wanna share it with everybody who I've shared my dashboard with, or if I just wanna keep it to myself, keep this personal. I could also add a checklist if I wanted to. I could expand this here and click add checklist and add kind of steps within here. Here, these are kind of individual conversations with my different team members. So I could even like add my team members here, like post conversation with Jerry, for example. I could do that for every single team member and just check those as I do them in the next couple of weeks. For now, I'm not going to add a checklist here. I'm just going to add this action. And then you can see it gives me this notification. The action has been created and I could head over to my insights tab again and go to my action plan. And on this page, you could see actions that are overdue. Maybe I actually did test this action. I could go ahead and mark it as done and I could see my upcoming actions. And you can see the action we just committed to is populated here. So this is just an area that I think just can increase accountability for managers personally. Nobody's kind of looking over their back, making sure they complete these, but managers who are invested in improving their scores could find a lot of use out of here because it's in here. It's not in some other tool or some, you know, and not in their 50th OneNote file on their desktop. It's actually in Pecan and really easy to interact with. And you can view a bunch of these actions if we head to the Improve tab. I can actually filter by like action if I want to and see all types of actions for every single driver in Pecan. That's really great. That was a long winded um, answer, question. but hopefully it helped. <laughs> yeah, um, from Amanda. So they survey on a quarterly frequency and they're averaging about 30 questions, which to some workers seems like a lot. I know we also had the same debate when we launched Pecan. Um, she says, do you recommend turning off certain types of questions like sub drivers or up the frequency of certain ones to a different cadence to reduce the number? What's the ideal number of questions for a quarterly survey? Yeah, so that's, you know, a topic we talk about all the time when implementing PECON. I would first want to know, um, what does your participation look like? You're here. Are you hearing that the surveys are perceived as too long from users or are you just kind of worried about that? And are you seeing like dropout rates? Are a lot of questions going unanswered or is it just like halfway through or are particular answers being skipped? If particular in, or if particular questions are being skipped, I would look into the wording of those questions. Maybe they're Maybe their hot items are considered a little bit too personal for employees and they feel a little bit nervous to answer them. Maybe they're just too much work, though. If all of your questions, like if you have a lot of open answer questions, for example, that might just be too much work. If there's a lot of um, open comment questions where you have to type out a response. But in general, PECON you'll see kind of tiers of scheduling in PECON with engagement questions and the core engagement questions often being asked the most frequently. So like every survey or every other survey and then drivers of engagement like like our diversity, health and well-being and transformation and change questions being asked like maybe quarterly or once every other quarter, maybe once a year, just depending on how useful they are and how quickly you think the answers are going to change. Okay, 
I think those were all the questions. So at this time, I just want to remind everybody that the session was recorded today. And thank you for participating. Hannah, you did a great job in your presentation. Mm -hmm. And I would like to remind the audience, please complete our survey at the end because we would like to host um, additional future webinars for you and engage you in your PECON journey. Thanks for your time today, everyone. Thanks, everybody.